Welcome to our series on Radome and bumper testing, where we cover everything you need to know about Radome testing and the usage of the powerful QAR50. This video is about the very beginning of bumper and Radome testing, material characterization. So how has material characterization been performed so far? Either the quasi-optical approach that I've presented before or waveguide-based setups were used. So the quasi-optical setup is what you see on that slide as a photograph on the left-hand side and as a schematic drawing on the right-hand side. So we have the corrugated horn antennas, we have the mirrors to uh, focus the beam, and we have this very small sample holder where we can position our samples. So this is the most precise setup that you can use for such kind of measurements. And the question is, how far is the QAR50 result actually away from this super precise result that you're getting with the VNA setup? So on the left-hand side, looking at the curve, we can see the QAR50 measurement in blue and the quasi-optical measurement in red. So it can be said that within the measurement tolerances, the QAR50 measurement result and the quasi-optical measurement result are more or less completely identical. So for material characterization, we can use as well the quasi-optical approach and the QAR50. So how do we perform material characterization? Basically, there's two ways to characterize the material using the QAR50. So looking on that slide, we can understand why and how these ways work. So we have the material depicted in blue and we have the transmitted signal and the reflected signal at all the transitions between the different layers. That means the material is arriving at the first transition between air and the material. Due to the change of epsilon r between these uh, two sides, there's a reflected wave. So that means reflection number one, when the signal enters the material. Inside the material, and then traveling outside, there's a second reflection. So in order to adapt the thickness and the material uh, to the radar frequencies, what we want is destructive interference. That means that the reflection from the first transition and the second transition cancel out. This is what is shown here. And the second way how we can measure the uh, permittivity is by measuring the phase. So inside the material, the wave is traveling at a different speed. So it's no longer traveling at the speed of light, but at a slightly different speed. And that is causing the phase change. So that means there are actually two ways of characterizing the material. First way is uh, through the resonance frequency, and the second one is through the transmission phase. Both ways are possible with the QVR50. So for the first way, Using the resonance frequency, we require a frequency resolution, obviously, which is the QAR 50K10 option. And you see the uh, formulas down there. And the second way is due to the phase shift, which is the QAR 50K20 option. And as well, the formula are depicted on that slide. So much to the theory. Now let's see how we can perform this measurement on the actual device. Therefore, I have prepared two samples. The first sample is just a standard polypropylene plate with a, a certain thickness that you have to measure because you need to know the thickness as precise as possible in order to perform the characterization. And the second sample is the exact same one just with the primer on. And my intention is now to characterize the primer. So what I first need to do is a normalization measurement using this sample only. So that means I put this sample into the QAR50, perform a, measure, a measurement, take this measurement as the normalization, and then perform a second measurement with the primer on. So this measurement I've already performed, and the measurement of the primer that you see currently in the instrument is exactly the measurement that you see here on the screen. So we are measuring a certain transmission phase, and with that transmission phase, and the normalized transmission phase that we have captured in the previous measurement, we can use our permittivity calculator in order to calculate the permittivity. The permittivity calculator is down here. It, you can run it on the device. You obviously have to enter the thickness of the layer that you want to characterize. So in my example, the layer is 20 micrometers thick and it's the primer. 
So I have normalized with this polypropylene blade, which I have characterized before. It has a thickness of 2.9 millimeters and a permittivity epsilon r of 2.5. So I have added this layer, so you can see it right here, with the thickness 2.9 millimeters, epsilon r 2.5. So now the software tells me, okay, given the thickness of the primer, the primer has a rough estimate or a rough estimation of the permittivity that the primer has is 28.6. So since the permittivity calculation is highly dependent on the thickness of the part, it's super important that you measure the thickness of the part or the thickness of each layer with the highest precision possible. Let me demonstrate this to you again with this sample. So this is the unpainted uh, polypropylene plate without primer, without any additional layer. So I have this measurement as well. So let me load that measurement. It is this measurement right here that I used before as normalization. I obviously have to change the thickness now, which was 2.9 millimeters, and I need to delete the normalization. So the epsilon r that this plate is giving me in the range that I'm expecting is roughly 2.5. So if I use the calculate optimal thickness button, what will come up is a graph of different thicknesses of the plate and the respective refractivity or attenuation. So you can see, if this would be my radome, what would be the optimal thickness of the plates? So in this case, you have an optimal thickness right at uh, 1.2, 1.3 millimeters, and another optimal thickness at around 2.5 millimeters. So you can see how the uh, transmission loss and the reflectivity are correlated and correlate with each other. So whenever you have an optimum in reflectivity, you as well have an optimum in transmission loss.